Hello, welcome to Career Force. Um, Explore Careers in Landscaping and Irrigation for February 16th, 2021. I'm Liz Jennings, so glad to have all of you here today where we get to think about spring and summer for just 60 minutes and we get to see a lot of beautiful summer photos. So it's our little escape for the day. But uh, more seriously, um, we're going to find out uh, in partnership with Minnesota Nursery and Landscape Association, find out a lot more about what the industry brings to Minnesota in terms of jobs and opportunities for working, hiring in the landscape and irrigation industries. Today, we'll hear from speakers from the Minnesota Nursery and Landscape Association, from Bachman's, from Biota, Biota Landscapes, and from Conserva Irrigation. And we'll talk a little bit more too about um, all of the other jobs that you might be able to uncover in a search from Minnesota Works or Career Force and where to go to get more information. So glad to have all of you here today. Please type in questions at any time during the presentation for any of your speakers and then after each um, speaker will will address some of those and they can also type their answers into the chat area for you. So let's move ahead. And I'd like to first welcome Paulette Sorensen. Oops, here we go. Paulette Sorensen of Minnesota Nursery and Landscape Association. Okay, I take it I can unmute my microphone, Liz. Yep, go okay, ahead. Yep, um, go ahead. All right. Um, I actually am pleased to, to be here today. I was imagining that you'd all see my face and um, I dressed up just for the occasion, but I just want to introduce myself. I'm Paulette Sorensen. I am a programs coordinator for Minnesota Nursery and Landscape Association. And we're really excited to co-host this webinar with Career Force Minnesota to explore careers in landscape and irrigation. It is our ambition today to help improve the green industry workforce. Okay, next slide there, Liz, thank you. A little bit about Minnesota nursery and lands. Oh, go back one, please. There you go. A little bit about Minnesota nursery and landscape Association. It's the region's oldest and largest horticultural trade association with over a thousand members. We represent many different companies across Minnesota and into our nearby states. Collectively, they generate yearly sales of over 1.9 billion and have a 3.5 billion direct effect on Minnesota's economy. Uh, next slide, please. When you step outside, virtually everything you see that is an asphalt has been touched by some point or by someone in the nursery and landscape industry. By making such a positive impact on the environment, you can see why they love their jobs. Next slide, please. You'll find answers to your questions about career possibilities at, on our webpage. Oh, did we miss our webpage, Liz? Can we back up one? Yes, okay, so this is a, a snapshot of one of our web pages where it's somewhat of a one stop shop. You can find out all about different careers um, that we represent, what their pay is, what kinds of skills are required, what kind of education is recommended, and resources to um, for all of those um, details. So you can find that on the MNLA website and I'll, I'll put it in the chat box, but there's a foundation button where you'll find a lot of different resources. Go ahead, next slide. At today's event, we're gonna to touch the surface of many opportunities uh, available in landscape and irrigation careers. And they are truly enormous. Next slide. You're gonna hear from some of our members today who love what they do. These are just pictures that we actually um, took of um, some of our, our scholarship recipients and other young people in the industry. Um, 
Many of the jobs offer free training. We can also help you with resources to further your education. Next slide. So if you have any of these traits and you're looking for a job that challenges you to learn and grow, the green industry is for you. Be sure to check out our job board, which is the next slide I think is a picture of it. Yeah, this is a, a snapshot of on our webpage of our job board and you can find the current uh, job opportunities. And also you are aware of the Career Force Minnesota's website as well. And then finally, our last slide, we want to invite you to a virtual job fair and it's actually next Thursday. It's a two hour event. Literally, there is some table hopping for about an hour and a half and many employers um, will be represented. It'll be a really fun event. Um, it will give you the opportunity to ask questions and simply just get your impression of working with them. Um, if you sign up, I will send you a job listing of the uh, available jobs for the season of uh, the upcoming season in 2021 and also contact information where you could send a resume or your interest to. So I hope after today's webinar, you'll get excited about the possibilities in, in the green industry. Thanks, Liz. I'll turn it back to you. Sure, thank you. Sure, yeah, you know, I wanted to yeah, highlight. You know, I wanted to highlight. Oops, put yourself on oops, put mute yourself there. On mute there. Um, I wanted to highlight this one page and draw a little bit more attention to it. Um, do you have any of these traits? Mathematical analytic skills, environmental awareness, creativity, problem solving skills, enthusiasm for design, aspiration to help people, desire to work with their hands, technologically savvy, love of the outdoors, independable and reliable. Um, you know, I think this is really what sets apart um, the landscape industry, it pulls together that um, outdoor environment with working with people, with the mathematical, with the design elements, you know, both the artistic and the analytical elements. Um, and a person can bring together their creativity, you know, like, how are we going to do this? Um, as well as the, the putting it in action. So, you know, so much of the time we hear people who say, well, I just don't want to work in an office um, and I really love being outdoors. Well, this is the, the best possible place um, in the landscaping and irrigation industry to pull it together. So I'm so glad that you um, included this, Paulette. And I will also put um, the the URL link. Oops, she just did. Great. Um, put it in the chat for people. So now let's move ahead and start hearing from the companies who play a role in the landscaping and irrigation industry. So first we're going to welcome Patrick Warden of Bachman's. Patrick, are you there? There, I think I'm unmuted. Uh, Great, thank you, yes. Liz. Uh, I'm excited to be here and share a little bit about our green industry and a little bit about Bachman's and, the great, and some of the great opportunities we may have out there for you. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been in the green industry for about 30 years. I've been with Bachman's 28 years. And, uh, you know, I grew up on a farm and had that passion of creativity, working with your hands and being outdoors. So a lot of those things that Paulette and Liz just talked about are what inspire me. And if you have those, uh, I would encourage you to look into the green industry. Um, a little bit about Bachman's. Uh, we have been in business since 1885. We are a family run company. Um, we do have six retail locations all around the metro area, plus a 670 acre growing range down in Lakeville, Minnesota, uh, with some of that being under glass for greenhouse uh, production. Uh, most of our services are headquartered out of the Minneapolis location, and that's where our HR and recruitment is also out of. So next slide. So 
for most of you, I, I would assume there is some story of a parent telling you about their trip to Bachman's or most of it is centered around our retail garden centers. Well, I want to make sure I share a little bit about all the other divisions that impact landscaping and growing and, and all things that the green industry has to offer. So next slide. First division uh, that uh, Bachman's uh, you, that you may not be aware of is that we have a full landscape, hardscape uh, division that uh, we do installation, design, we sell it. Uh, we also sell hardscapes out of our Lakeville location for all contractors that do this work in our green industry. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, for the creative side of people with design, garden coaching, um, and, uh, you know, helping people, you know, improve their environment around their homes. We also have a full installation uh, division where we actually will install it. A lot of great opportunities if you're good with your hands. And there's a lot of different sales and maintenance opportunities uh, with our landscape divisions. And I think someone had the question about what is hardscapes. If you think of most patios, decks, driveways, sidewalks, anything that's non-plant related, you may hear that term hardscapes uh, used for it in general. So next slide. Uh, business services is a lot like our landscape division, but we'll go out and do this same similar type of work out in the commercial interior environment where you may have been in a mall or uh, in some corporate building and you have seen plants in their entryway. Uh, we do a lot of work with that. So we'll do the design, the installation and sales of a lot of that type of work. Uh, and yet again, this is a great opportunity if you are creative with your hands, like building things, uh, like dealing with uh, the fast paced corporate clients uh, in selling and designing a lot of opportunities here. Uh, it also helps with the corporate environment, uh, environmentally, it helps clean the air. And so a lot of companies are taking a look at their carbon footprint and this is part of it. So next slide. Uh, we have a definitely a with 670 acres down at, at Lakeville, we have a lot of different opportunities in our farm and greenhouse production. Uh, so outdoor production is where most of those acres are utilized. Uh, we do grow most of the plant material that we will sell in our retail stores. Um, but we also do then bring in plant materials and, and uh, utilize our wholesale division to not only you know, for our landscape groups, but for other landscape companies out there, we will provide them the plants and different hard good materials for them. So there's a lot of opportunities. If you like to grow things, like to be part of nature and an impact on our environment, um, there's a lot of production and there's a lot of uh, outdoor uh, growing trees, growing perennial shrubs, all those things. Otherwise working with our wholesale, if, you, if you're a good people person, Wholesale and order fulfillment, you're doing a lot of sales with other companies and getting them the plant materials. So there's a lot of time spent outside. So next slide. If, uh, you know, some of those exterior uh, jobs and opportunities are not your, we also take care of all of our facilities in-house. So we have a lot of opportunities with like planter design, floral design is something else we were really known for is, especially now that it's just Valentine's done with. Uh, ideas house, store visuals and special events. Those are a lot of things that are happening here at one of our Bachman's locations. And if you like to be a little bit maybe indoors, but still be creative, uh, these are some great opportunities to be a floral designer, plant design, or working on some of those sets and props all around uh, our different stores. Next slide. Even though we do all this stuff outside, uh, being self-contained, we still have to have our own accountants, our own human resource division administrative. So all our corporate jobs. So if you're a talented accountant or anything like that, uh, it, but yet you wanna be involved in a company that is in the green industry, has an impact on the environment. Uh, at Bachman's, we do have 
uh, we do in-house all our own work. So we do have our own purchasing departments where you can purchase anything from annuals, flowers, to trees, shrubs, marketing, where we do all our online marketing. Uh, administrative is obviously, there's a lot of moving pieces here, human resources. Um, there is a lot of recruitment that has to happen uh, with all these positions and jobs out there. So uh, even if uh, being creative with your hands is not, uh, you know, ideal for you and you're more of a, a mathematical or anything, but you want to have a company that you can stand behind. Uh, we have a lot of those positions available. And then next. Finally, I think what we're known most for is we have a wide variety of different opportunities. You can impact the green industry uh, by working at one of our six uh, garden center locations. Uh, obviously, there's leadership management positions at each one of our locations, horticulturalists, uh, customer service and working in our greenhouse or otherwise floral design. So there's a lot of different areas uh, that you can impact in our retail locations. Uh, we are in Maplewood, Fridley, Plymouth, Eden Prairie, Apple Valley, and then our home store is here in Minneapolis. Next slide. Um, so if you are interested in, in a career path in the green industry, and you'd like to look at Bachman's, uh, we obviously have our own website, uh, Bachman's.com. You can go on there and look for uh, under forward slash corporate forward slash employment, all the different opportunities that we have uh, there. I think currently we have about 17 openings uh, right now. Um, and then uh, we do also have our job hotline, which is 861-7724, or I put up our uh, recruiter's name there also. So these are a lot of different uh, opportunities um, that are available. And I guess I will leave it open for any questions. Hi, Patrick. Yeah. Um, one question. Are there part time jobs available besides the retail? How do you work that? So there are a lot of part time positions available. Uh, especially at all our retail locations. Uh, that's where it's probably the easiest at Lindale uh, in, in our landscape and garden services, uh, obviously our part-time with uh, front desk, administrative, all that. And then all of our garden coaches are actually part-time and that position is open and posted on our website right now. And that's kind of a horticultural expert going to customers' yards and giving them advice. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, and you'll be participating in the February 25th uh, Minnesota Nursery and Landscape Association Job Fair, correct? That is correct. And yeah. our recruiter Ainsley will be there. Good, good. And I posted the, the URL for your employment site. And I know that um, Bachman's has all of their positions posted on minnesotaworks.net too our state labor exchange so they can find, you can find Bachman's at a number of different ways. <laughs> yep, that is correct. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much, Patrick, for being here. Yep. Let's move ahead. I would like to wel welcome Jim Sabolt of Biota Landscapes. Hi, thanks for having us. Uh, I am Jim Sabolt. I'm uh, one of the owners of Biota Landscapes. And I just wanted to first take a quick moment and just thank everyone for attending and taking the time to learn more about careers in the green industry. Um, I'm involved with MNLA and the MNLA Foundation, and one of our tasks is helping to promote uh, jobs in the green industry. But I can say it honestly, um, I feel that a career in the green industry is one of the best kept, kept secrets out there. Um, for people like myself, I did work in the corporate realm uh, out of college for a while. It wasn't for me. Um, I didn't like the sedentary lifestyle and frankly, the way my brain works. Uh, I like doing different things, learning things and being more hands on. So a lot of the, um, the lead in uh, topics that Paulette spoke to about liking to work with your hands, liking variety, um, liking the fresh air that Patrick talked about um, really resonate with me. And I think really resonate with a lot of people. Um, and how timely is it in the time of COVID where having social distance, being outside, fresh air, being healthy. I mean, I, I joke that we get paid to work out um, without a gym membership. 
Um, but those things resonate with me. And so I feel really lucky to be in the green industry. Um, I will, in full disclosure, also offer that I do a lot of work with Bachmann's and Bachmann's is a great company and they are a great company to work for. Um, everything that Patrick just said is true. I have a lot of friends that work there. There's a lot of opportunity and a lot of different lateral movement um, and places to work within a place like Bachmann's. Um, and I, I would say within an organization like ours as well, too. Um, so um, I'd also like to just take a moment and dispel a big myth about the green industry. And that myth is that a career in the green industry is not a high paying job. That is false. Um, depending on what sector you choose to work in, I will let you know and tell you firsthand, it is not uncommon that uh, some folks that are good at what they do in their job in the green industry um, and advance can make north of six figures a year. That's not uncommon. And, People don't think about it like that. I'm not saying every job pays more than six figures, um, but it's not uncommon to get there. Um, and so there is a misnomer, a misunderstanding about what this industry pays. Remember, there is a shortage of labor. There has been for a while. Skilled, honest craftsmen and craftswomen uh, and contractors are hard to come by. And the people that typically are hiring luxury firms have luxurious amounts of income. These people aren't afraid to spend it on things that bring them and their families enjoyment. And that's frankly where we come in. Uh, I'm happy more to talk more about those truths later, but for now, I'll share a little bit more about Biota. Um, and as you can see on the bottom of our slide, uh, as most people don't speak Latin, uh, you likely aren't aware that the word Biota is the Latin word uh, for the flora and fauna of a specific region. We thought that a very fitting name for our firm since we work uh, to create a more perfect Biota for each client that we collaborate with. Uh, we predominantly work with residential scale clients and we employ, employ designers, build craftspeople, and garden maintenance employees. Uh, next slide. Um, we are based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, we're an award-winning landscape design and build firm that works, like I said, in residential scale projects. But we've earned a reputation uh, within the green industry as innovators and leaders. Um, our mission is to create innovative designs that invite interaction and inspire the imagination using the highest quality plants, materials, and construction techniques while promoting sustainable practices every step of the way. We strive to share our knowledge and foster an ongoing stewardship to create lasting enjoyment. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a quick snapshot of our team last year. Um, we're a smaller firm. Um, this is our 16th year and we, I, I purposefully pull the reins on growth. Uh, we don't want to get massive and big. Um, I run three to four build crews and we have um, right now three to four garden maintenance crews. And to be honest, that is the one area of exponential growth because every time we build more installations, uh, more clients need garden maintenance services. Um, our top tier employees are attracted to, incentivized by, and retained through a fun company culture and fantastic compensation packages that emphasize a healthy work-life balance. Um, we're super lucky to have awesome people here at Biola. Um, we aren't the biggest company, like I said, but there is room for growth and advancement. On this page alone, there are over 10 people that have stayed with Biota for more than five years. It may also help that I offer a plane ticket anywhere in the country if you work with us for five years, um, and anywhere in the world, if you work here for 10, uh, we have 3 people on deck for the 10 year anniversary next year. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, I hope they can travel with COVID. Uh, next slide. Uh, so what do we do? Right? Um, we create unique bios, um, or for those non Latin speakers, uh, we design, build and maintain unique outdoor spaces um, and environments with some really interesting people and clients. Um, so the first slide, you can see an example of some CAD designing um, and the fun exchanging of the, of the design process with our design charrettes and our design team. Uh, in the middle, you can see some of our crews building some bluestone retaining walls and filling in some plantings. Uh, we plant new environments using a, a wide array of tools, machinery, equipment, and a fleet of, our own fleet of vehicles. And then finally, um, you know, we offer ongoing garden maintenance services so that our clients can enjoy being in their space versus spending time maintaining it. Um, clients love working with Biota because we're honest, smart, and frankly, fun to collaborate with. We listen to our clients, but we also hear the unspoken. 
Um, we're highly trained and industry connected experts that help clients navigate the newest innovations and promote environmentally sustainable and enjoyable outdoor spaces. Um, oh, I have some good questions on here. Is it a round trip ticket? <laughs> <laughs> no, we send them away. Um, um, and are the vehicles combustion engines? Great question, Charles. Um, I'll just pause and answer a couple of these as they're coming in. But uh, we are we are we worked in conjunction and are receiving a grant with EPA. We're converting a lot of our small engines to stroke um, engines to battery operated. That's an initiative we started last year, and our entire garden maintenance division will be uh, converted to all battery zero emissions by the end of this season. So we've done that within two years, which we're pretty proud of. Um, and there are more initiatives like that. We're putting solar panels on the top of our roof this spring, um, which is making us uh, a zero consumption energy um, business. Um, and I'd be happy to talk more about that. Um, I feel that in the design build and landscape space, um, it, it, should, it should be a given that we are promoting and bringing newest technologies and innovative sustainable practices to our clients. That is our, in my opinion, responsibility, and that should be expected, not the exception or something that I have to promote and potentially greenwash uh, through advertising with. We should just be doing that. So I'm happy to, to talk about more uh, initiatives that we um, have already realized, but will continue to in the future. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Jim, there was also a question about how does the seasonal change affect hiring patterns? Oh, yeah, um, right. Um, so we do have some salaried staff about uh, 9 to 10 folks that are here year round. Um, we are designing um, and meeting with clients this year via zoom a lot more all winter long. Um, our build staff does go down um, some folks. Uh, we employ a lot of artists that, that enjoy having the winter off. Some people like to travel in years past. Um, but we do, I always promise folks when we hire for the seasonal staff, if you're just on a labor or build crew, um, a lot of employees will be college students or they have restaurant jobs in winter, but we will employ everyone up till Thanksgiving for sure. Oftentimes in oftentimes into December, and then we basically take, uh, and then we shut down the entire business, even for salary folks, we give everybody 2 weeks paid vacation off. Um, just to go reset, be with family, forget about work, but then we come back mid mid to late January and the designing is still continuing. Um, uh, our seasonal staff will come back about mid March for our orientation and onboarding trainings. So we have what I call our winter lull. And as much as I've really tried to maintain that, we have a couple of our foremen that work here um, that are doing a very small snow route. Uh, and I'll speak to that directly. I, I despise snow removal. I don't want to do it and then we don't want to pursue it here at Biota. Um, I've done it when I've managed other uh, businesses in the past. And frankly, in my opinion, it's just a very thankless business operation. I'm sorry if other people are doing that or, or, or like it. Nobody ever calls you to tell you how great their parking lot looks. Um, so we've, we've steered clear of that, uh, but we do have plenty of work. Um, to keep us going through the winter, whether that be through some dormant pruning, container design, and annual redesign for the spring, or landscape design and meeting with clients um, as well. Uh, we also do maintain our own fleet and small uh, machinery here that we have. So we keep busy. Um, Great. Uh, what kind of experience are you looking for? I'll talk about the experience in a bit. And are, am I hiring out of state? If you're looking to relocate here from out of state, um, yes, uh, I would. Um, be more than interested in talking to anybody, but this is our only location as of now here in the Metro Minneapolis area. Uh, okay, so where are we? That was our team. So what do we do? We could, and then here um, on this slide, um, a typical day for us begins around eight, goes until about four. Um, some landscape companies work a lot more. I've worked at some landscape companies that work a lot more, you know, from 6 a.m. to sometimes 7 or 8 p.m. Um, we do not do that. Um, we really believe in a, in a, in a strong work-life balance. Um, work smarter, not longer is my mantra. Um, but also, frankly, the staff that we have, myself included, I love spring, summer, and fall. Um, I even like winter. Uh, but um, I want to work and still have enough time after work 
to be with my daughters, to be with my family, to be with my friends outside and enjoy it. And I have worked at landscape companies that really burn you out, you know, and you'll you'll last a couple of years, but then you're not enjoying it anymore. So we we really strive and achieve a really good work life balance. So um, I, we're often holding people to 45 hours a week or less, which um, is not a lot of overtime. And I have that conversation with employees on the front end because there are some folks that just want to make as much overtime as possible, and they. And so we're not a fit potentially for that person if they're just looking to work 70, 80 hour work weeks and um, and, and and burn themselves out, really. Um, uh, most of us love, like I said, being outside. Um, we value our free time with family. Um, we love, and then this speaks to the experience question a little earlier. We love hiring experienced folks, but we also welcome people new to the industry that, that just have a great attitude and work ethic and that want to learn. We will train people in house, and then we do offer fully funded education uh, to those with the initiative to learn more. Um, and these are the current positions that we're looking to fill. So landscape crew members with zero to uh, entry level experience, assistant foreman. These are folks that have been on some build crews and construction crews before, probably built some patios, maybe are almost ready to take that next step into leading a crew or a smaller crew. Always looking for um, uh, experienced foremen, um, and then residential gardeners of, of varying degrees and levels uh, as well. And so these are folks that are maintaining um, landscapes that we've installed in the past. Um, let's see. We're hiring designers right now. Um, we have just uh, we are just finishing up the interview process for our designers. So if you are an experienced designer, uh, feel free to send in a resume. Um, because I don't believe there's been a final decision made yet. Um, well, we'll be at the job fair and then base pay. Uh, absolutely. So you can see now on this slide that we just advanced to. So not only do we pay above industry standard, um, but I, I made it. We've made a decision. Um, we've, we've been offering health insurance since we were um, around and that, and that was an anomaly. Um, but not only health, but we offer, you know, we pay matching health benefits, dental and vision insurance. We also have a simple IRA, so we will match your retirement up to 3% as well. Um, we offer you paid vacation, um, and then we also offer a very generous paid family time off. Because um, our employees are everything. Without them, we don't exist. And so we decided long ago that they need to make a good living and have a good work-life balance. Um, we, um, we also offer family time off for uh, marriages or, or unions or important family events like death or new children. Um, and in short, one can start at a biota um, with no experience, earn a good income and advance as much as you'd like with the right attitude. Um, let's see, next slide. So in summary, I mean, a firm like biota could be a great fit for someone who likes creative work. Um, likes having a job that promotes a healthy lifestyle and work-life balance. And for someone who likes learning a lot about different things like sustainability, ecology, construction, or design. Um, I, I always say this is a great job for me because mon monotony kills me. Um, and so I can literally be out on job sites, getting my hands dirty one day, um, making sure I still got my chops and install, and I can be sitting in on a vendor meeting with Bachman's talking about what new plants might be coming in this year that are really exciting or what they're growing um, or in a construction pre-con meeting with a subcontractor who's a genius in steel welding and fabrication like you can actually see on this photo which is exactly what we did we built this this is an MNLA award-winning project and also an ASLA award-winning project on a on a prairie and you can see the Corten steel water runnels um, cutting through the landscape and making a lower basin pond and that upper um, historical uh, Louisiana um, copper um, bowl spilling over into that. So it's just every project's different, every client's different. And I just feel that we're really fortunate and lucky to be able to play outside. Um, so if you or somebody know might be interested in a career like this, feel free to contact us by any of the provided methods here. Your phone, if you scan that um, black and white thing, takes you right to our job page. Otherwise, uh, the links are there as well. And I will be at the job fair as well. Uh, and we did post um, a position ahead of this 
presentation on the minnesotaworks.net site as well. So happy to answer any other questions. QR code, thanks. Thanks, Charles. Right. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Jim. Yeah, we've we've answered all of them right now. And I do want to move ahead sure. to conserve irrigation. Jake Mavery is here today to talk about the irrigation of, of the landscaping of the nursery industry. Perfect. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, as Liz mentioned, and then are you driving this? Yes, yes, okay. I'll forward it. Perfect. Um, yeah, so as Liz had mentioned, my name is Jake Mathry uh, with Conserva Irrigation. So I have a very uh, robust, rounded uh, experience in the industry, uh, starting out uh, as a general laborer, as you know, many of you might be looking for kind of how do you get started in the industry? Where are we looking? Um, and yet you start somewhere, and that might be a progression of a couple weeks getting elevated um, or depending on learning curve could be as long as a month kind of or two getting elevated into your own vehicle. But I have 16 years of irrigation experience, started as a general labor, worked as a installation foreman, service tech, uh, ops manager for the local office in, twin, in the Twin Cities Metro. And then um, I now actually uh, moved out of state, but am the director of operations for the franchise. So we had French founded Conserve Irrigation in Ham Lake, still have an office um, there that's doing well. Um, but I am kind of the well-rounded role of kind of been in the shoes of various entry points of this industry. Um, so I wanna give you a little bit of kind of well-rounded uh, background of the industry and what opportunities there are and then more so kind of with Conserva, what uh, opportunities we have and what we're looking for from potential employees. So really the irrigation space and opportunities are, are endless. Um, you know, it kind of all starts in the field, understanding the trade, understanding the technical side of it, uh, but it is a multi-billion dollar industry that has many different levels of employment. You have the contractor level, of technician, uh, for install foreman, laborer, general manager of an office, owner of your own landscape company. And then outside of that, there's also opportunity with distribution partners and manufacturers. So it really is kind of, you know, if you're looking for a summer college job, if you're looking for out of high school college or summer job, and looking to kind of say, all right, how can I expand this into a larger career? there are a lot of opportunities in the irrigation space. And that can be entry level with any of those opportunities. But like I had mentioned is the career growth is really whatever you wanna put into it. Um, however much you wanna get educated on the technical side, understanding the science behind it, obviously understanding the smart efficient side of irrigation is where the industry is moving. Um, but it really is that is is joining the irrigation space is not just, you know, we're not, um, you know, you're not stuck to a shovel your whole life. And it's not, you're not, um, you know, that's kind of the picture from the outside in is yes, they're digging holes, they're installing systems, they're doing this. Um, but it really is an endless opportunity as long as you have the ability to, and the want and the know-how to continue learning. Um, I tell, joke around with my employees, um, with fellow franchisees that, you know, irrigation is, I'll be the last one to say, I know everything about the industry. Um, there are wiser men than, than I, and they, they know more than I do. They've just been around more. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about it is you're constantly learning and more so on the science of it and how and the why it works and less on the actual, the practical of the repairs and the fixes and identifying and troubleshooting but understanding the science behind it, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there to grow. So us as Conserva Irrigation, we are um, a leader in efficient irrigation services. So when I say that is we are not an install um, company, we are a service maintenance retrofit company. So we pride ourselves on uh, the model we have built of looking at old systems, um, five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 30 year old systems, 
and saying, you know, antiquated technology and maybe improper design, uh, you know, disrepair and neglect that's been ignored over time. And how do we identify that and then educate the end user on ways they can improve their system? Um, and, and that is really the goal. Um, you know, our goal is to limit, not eliminate the use of water in landscape irrigation. It has a needed purpose. Um, I know Jim at uh, Biota would not have much success growing those beautiful flowers they put in without an irrigation system. Um, so it does have a place, but it can also be very wasteful if not managed properly. So that is our whole business is on service retrofit maintenance of systems. And we do that through really our core values of professionalism, um, innovation. So with professionalism, we are, you know, everyone's showing up looking clean, uh, very professional office staff, trained field technicians, as far as sales deliverability, how to talk to a homeowner, more so building the life skills outside of irrigation, just general life skills that you'll need on how to have a conversation, how to small talk with, with a stranger, how to bring up and educate them on a, on a topic that they might push back on a little bit, then how to overcome those objections. From an innovative, per, innovative perspective, we use, um, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing innovation. That's working with distribution partners, manufacturing partners, and really only installing the best of the best, um, whether it be smart weather-based timer technology, high efficient heads, um, proper head spacing. Uh, there's, there's not an A, B, C way to install a sprinkler system. There, it's, there's an A, it's head-to-head -head coverage, it's efficient design, and it's with a smart controller. And, and it's really looking at the older antiquated systems and how do we educate homeowners on that. Um, and then the last slide here that I'll go into more depth on is positions we have available. So we are constantly um, hiring both in the Minneapolis market, but then also with 42 locations nationwide um, and growing. Um, entry level technicians, zero experience needed. Um, all you need is good work ethic, uh, a drive, for, an ambition for success and the ability and want to learn those three things and you can enter the irrigation space and that entry level person is we do all training um, industry training te technical training sales training they ride along with an experienced technician to gain more knowledge uh, but as i had mentioned our goal is to try to get an entry level technician by themselves in less than two months um, and we, we have that with different curriculum of internal uh, e-learning modules and testing to see how you're progressing through um, our training platform. And then we have our experienced irrigation technicians where we're always looking for those as well. Um, but the biggest thing is that we call it our lily pad effect. Um, we're just looking for folks that have great work ethic want to learn a new trade as it is a skilled trade. It is very scientific. I am a math major by um, college education and I use it every day at irrigation. Um, but it's, it's a skilled trade if you're, if you're wanting to learn more and more about the scientific side of irrigation. But we do all hands-on training for the sales side. Um, and as our lily pad effect is, you may not last your career with conserving irrigation, but while you're in our lily pad, we're going to give you the skills, life skills of how to communicate, how to present yourself, how to talk to a homeowner, how to sell, how to overcome objections, how to justify pricing, how to model pricing, how to design systems. So it's, it's whether you last a, a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, your whole career, all we ask for is work ethic, and a drive of success so that your next lily pad, you're elevating upward. We never wanna see you leave our company and go downward. Um, I have the motto of, of a manager uh, that, you know, it's you should be training people that can replace your job. If you're not doing that from day one, you're limiting the success of the business. 
And we have that instilled in every level of the business. The technicians know they should be training the entry level technician to replace them because that technician might move into just a sales role or with multiple branches around the country may move into a general manager role um, there as well. Additionally, with all the career advancements, um, there is pay increases. So we do want to make sure you're advancing. And like I mentioned, we track that internally with e-learning modules and then testing assessments to see how you're tracking. And then with the field knowledge as well, just making sure you're understanding exactly what you need to do on a day-to-day, -day, what technology we're using, how to use the CRM, um, how to troubleshoot systems, how to sell better. The, the, the more you learn and the faster you grow, the more opportunity there is for uh, career advancement opportunities. We're also uh, proud partners of the Irrigation Association and are strong believers in certification through that, that every one of our office locations pays for. Um, it's, it's, it's in our lifeblood of making sure technicians are certified and they're continuing their education. And we get the question all the time of, well, what, aren't you afraid that they're gonna leave and go somewhere else? And the answer to that is, if, if, if they do, good for them. It must have been something that I did wrong creating culture um, because an employee leaving the company is all about culture. And if we're providing the right culture, the right pay, the right benefits, the career advancement, then employees shouldn't want to leave. Um, and, and if they leave after we've got them certi certified, again, it's it's the lily pad effect. Maybe they got the management job at a at a another uh, contractor down the road that had an open position. That's, you know, good for them. We want to make sure we're ascending employees. So I do have a couple uh, ways for applying for jobs on here. We have our careers page, which is a really long URL there. The, sh the short way is if you go to conserveirrigation.com, there's a jobs button, but that's the URL that uh, it redirects you to. Uh, or just calling the local office there, and they'll set you up uh, sending your, to your email address this exact link. So this is the careers page where uh, you're filling out an application. It houses everything for us, and then response from there. But we are constantly looking for entry-level technicians or experienced technicians. And really, the, the irrigation industry, like I mentioned, is it's endless. As long as you want to learn and be educated more and more and more, you can go as far as you want. Um, and it doesn't have to stay within our company, but we're more than happy to get you started down the right track. Jake, a question coming in. Um, yes. Do you have any offices in Duluth or other parts of the state out of the metro? We do. So we have uh, one, our, it's one uh, franchisee who has two offices. He has one in Mankato and one in Rochester. Okay. Okay. Um, and then in the professionalism uh, slide, you mentioned a clean look. What do you mean by that? Um, so um, presentable. So uh, we have for, for our uniforms, you can see our technician right there. So always conserva attire, um, no ratty pants, preferably tucked in. Um, if you can during the day, work boots at all times, um, clean facial hair. So facial hair is allowed. Just, you know, it's proper hygiene. Tattoos um, are fine. Uh, that, that's not an issue anymore in today's society. Um, piercings are, are, again, fine. Um, try to limit um, face tattoos, but for the right person, it, it's more on how they present themselves and not letting their visual representation do the presenting for them. <laughs> what about beards? <laughs> what was that? What about beards? Uh, beards are allowed as, as you know, it it's, doesn't matter the length. It's just, you know, it's, it's manicured. Right, right. So thank you, Jake. You know, and what I noticed between you and Bachman's and Biota, you all have entry points depending on your level of education. Is that correct? I mean, some, you know, you're, you're training people if they come in with a high school diploma and then you have other opportunities along the way correct yeah and it's a um you know it's it both landscaping irrigation are both skilled trades um 
but they're not looked at the sim in a similar kind of trade as your plumbing, electrician, welder, but it's still a skilled trade. And taking on someone with a high school education and training on the trade, you know, they can go as far as they want in the industry, but they have to start somewhere. Right, right. Uh, Jim or Patrick, do you have anything you want to add? I can add, uh, I think, uh, or just echo that point is uh, on the landscape side of things, it's a great place to learn on the job. Uh, you know, many people go to college, but that's not the, the pathway for everyone. Uh, I think the landscape career path is ideal for learning, starting at the bottom, working your way up, um, and with Bachman's, and I think any landscape or irrigation company, there's a lot of opportunities to find that path if, uh, you know, all college is not in your, in your pathway. I'd echo that as well. Um, and I think, um, I, for, I forget the gentleman's comment, but it was, or question, it was a good one regarding um, the seasonality of, of our, of all three, um, of us and how there is an element of seasonality to our job. Bachman's perhaps uh, because they are so much larger um, have, if you're going into a job, maybe in more administration may not have the different different ebbs and flow of seasonality, but rather than run from that comment, I, I, I choose to, to attack it head on and, and talk more about that because it's important. I think Colin brought that question up and it's a good one. Um, speaking for Biota, I actually help place people if um, they are an entry level labor position and they want to continue working uh, through uh, Christmas and the holidays through that that two month lull time. Uh, I will help place them with other um, cohorts within the industry. Um, and, and trust me, it's very easy to place people and keep them employed through these times. But I also look at it as a positive and, and, and I mean that I'm not trying to, to sell my position. Um, I can't imagine doing the work we do in a place like Florida, where I would be doing design and builds through all 12 months of the year. I like the ebb and flow of my industry. I like that there is a peak season and then a slower season where I can reflect and look back on how the season went and switch gears a little bit. I think probably that's why many of us live here in Minnesota is we do like the changes and the seasonalities of things. But um, if, if I think if that's a concern of somebody applying for one of our, our jobs, I think you should definitely bring that up and find out what each employer, how we navigate that specifically, um, because that's an important question. Uh, and I help, I help our employees go through that with eyes wide open and get answers to that before you even start working with me on day one. Because if you're planning for a family or just your financial stability, you need to understand that as well. We do things like carry our employees health insurance and retirement benefits through those two months, regardless of whether they are on our payroll. Um, so there's a lot of interesting and creative things we, th that we can do in the industry to make it work. Great, thank you. And thank you to all three of you, Jake, who is Conserva, uh, Patrick by Bachman's and Jim with Biota. Um, I've learned a lot, and uh, we look forward to having, you know, everyone on this call is more than welcome to sign up for the Minnesota Nursery and Landscape Association's job fair. It's their hosting it. It's not a career force event, but that's on February 28th, and I'll put the back into the chat so you can uh, register for the event. Um, I'm going to Jake. If you do, you want to say anything more? Um, no, I'm just going to echo off what Jim said. Is talk to talk to the employer uh, oh. because everyone being in seasonal businesses, it's it's obviously one of the first questions that comes up uh, when you're in the interview process. Is how do you manage seasonal work and work with the employer on that. We have a similar situation um, that Jim does of working with trade partners in the metro there that have full time work um, dealing with other uh, customer partners of ours who might um, have connections in the retail world or uh, we have some technicians that like to uh, work four months in Florida if they don't have family tying them down 
at that point in life. Um, and they're just coming in and they're saying, I'll be a technician in Minnesota for the summer months. That's where my you know living arrangements are. But what are the opportunities nationwide to maybe work those four months somewhere else? So I would just say in any situation, whether it's with one of these three companies or whoever your prospective employer is, is just ask them, what, what do you do for off season work? How do you help manage that? The other thing that I think is important with that is um, getting sound financial advice at a young age and uh, from a money management standpoint is at, at the wages that are being paid, um, especially as you grow in the, the ladder is it's, it's good wage, even at you know eight months of busy work, if it's managed correctly um, throughout that time. That if, you know, I've had a lot of past employees that they've gone through financial training. We bring someone in every year to talk to our technicians about it and putting away 10, 15% of their paycheck during the summer months when in addition to the unemployment in the winter months and they they level that out um, for their family needs over the year. So talk to your employees or your em potential employers, uh, but there's definitely opportunity out there. Great, thank you. Yeah, it, you know, we, we have never, uh, Unless we work in an industry, we really don't know how it, it handles things like winter and other things. So that really helps. Um, I want to point out to everyone, you know, I always put a plug in for Career Force. Um, as you know, on CareerForceMN.com, if you scroll down to the middle of the page, there's a gray job search uh, area. Um, this is linked with MinnesotaWorks.net, which is our other job um, job search database. In any case, I typed in the words irrigation and then a Minneapolis zip code today, and I came up with um, another five or six companies within like a 25 mile radius. And I know if you type in any of your zip codes, because I know we, on these calls, we always have people coming from all over the state. So my point is, is that use some of the career force resources um, to find a company that is in your area. If you are ever interested in finding out a little bit more of the data behind the landscape or the irrigation or the nursery industry or any other industry, again, remember too that on the Career Force MN site, we have an Explore Careers button. And if you type in the, the keyword of the job that you're thinking of and going there, it's linked to labor market, real-time information, um, census data, um, information about wages, about training, about background, associations related, and it's your little research, research portal into um, finding out more about whether even, you know, the pay of some, you know, position is in line with what we know um, the median and the mean are in Minnesota. Uh, switching gears completely, um, all of my partners across the metro and across the state are having job fairs in the next coming days. I will include this information in the email out to you. But right after you're done with this event, you are all welcome to jump right over to the Metro Regional Virtual Job Fair. Um, I will post that URL um, in the chat as soon as we're done talking, but it's metroregioninteractive.easyvirtualfair.com. Um, and that's going on till five, so you can quick create a login if you don't have one already and, and chat with some of the employers. Anoka County is having manufacturing focused job fair tomorrow. Hennepin County and Hennepin and Carver counties is having a, a webinar tomorrow afternoon at one. St. Cloud area Thursday um, at 10, 10 to 12. And then Dakota Scott counties also on Thursday. So a lot of events going on. You can find out links to, to all of these on one of our Career Force pages there. Some of the other upcoming workshops on Career Force interviewing skills, Minnesota Works, creative job search. So we'd love to help you further in your job search. 
some of the topics coming up, building productions, uh, building products production and women in construction. And I've got a couple of March dates that I'm actively working up topics. So check back for those too. And check in with Career Force MN at any time and let us help you along your job search at any, you know, with anything you might need. So I'm going to wrap it up right there. I'm Liz Jennings. Thank you to all of our presenters today. Thank you to Paulette Sorensen with Minnesota Landscape Nursery and Landscape Association for helping me plan this. And reach out to me if you have questions. See you next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.